Yeah, hello. Um, uh, I'm uh, this one and I present you the work. Uh, we are just started uh, about a year ago conceptually and really some months ago um, about um, building a database uh, for collecting um, paleo environmental GIS based data. And, uh, Structured the talk like this. Uh, we'll first introduce uh, the project uh, we are working in and um, um, about the yeah the boundary conditions of this uh, research and work. Then uh, we'll tell about what data we actually collect and how, and then how we make this accessible. And uh, finally, I will draw some conclusions. So this work is um, conducted in the frame of the uh, Collaborative Research Center 806. This is a yeah, quite, uh, quite large uh, interdisciplinary um, research project uh, um, that concerns the history of mankind um, and in particular the mi migration extension pro processes of uh, Homo sapiens from its assumed source in Africa, mainly into Europe. This, in this research project uh, are working around 80 researchers um, um, from the disciplines of uh, archaeology, geosciences, from geology over geography, many geographers, and um, also uh, cultural scientists, like anthropologists. I, I myself, I'm a geographer and computer scientist. So, but a geographer from uh, official certificate and computer scientist just uh, started to study and then changed. Um, yeah, the, the project is um, in overall set out for 12 year span. This uh, it started already in 2013, and I present you a sub-project we just started conceptually a year ago, and um, it uh, will be, uh, um, it's now in the final times of the second phase and will uh, hopefully get the third phase. These phases get uh, evaluated after four year terms and then, yeah, that's the setting. So you can read a lot about it. Here it's a German URL, but all content is in English. So, so that's a um, short introduction to my work. I, I, I'm the person in this project who is responsible for the data management. Um, and I just sent it in. Uh, yesterday I sent it to the uh, printer, uh, to the printing uh, firm. Uh, for printing my uh, PhD dissertation about uh, implementing this uh, um, database. Uh, uh, but I will not bore you with this. Uh, how, how, how I did this, so you can just see some, we, we made it on, uh, on the basis of open source software. Uh, it's a type of three content management system, web front end, uh, a CCAN, uh, uh, metadata catalog and a GeoNode application for the geospatial SDI application. So now we get to the topic of today. This is um, the small chart I came up with uh, in the preparation of this uh, talk uh, for what kind of data uh, sources we collect. So the problem is in this project, um, many people come to to me or to us and say, oh, we have here uh, done nice research about this, this and that region from this and that time. Uh, we want to make a map with our uh, sites and uh, whatnot. Um, and uh, it's always the same problem. What, what kind of data can we use to show uh, an environment of uh, 25,000 years ago? It's uh, always a thing. Um, of uh, how you get the data to do it not in a drawing way like in a, a 
do it in uh, like drawing a map from from your head. We we want to build an approach to do it in a GIS and build a GIS map. And for this, we collect data from these four main sources. So um, we have um, uh, the data representation uh, access is unstructured and structured, I call it. It's not really worked out yet, so I just came up for this talk with that chart. We have unstructured information. I consider the information that has no um, coordinates directly with it for uh, computational use. That would be text, like papers and books, and maps, so like printed maps. Maps have intrinsic spatial information. You see all this information directly of the map, JS data too. JS data is uh, what we want. In the end, this has all of it. So that's the data sources here, an example for some paleo environmental maps you can find, which are not directly usable because you see uh, nice annotations, but that's, uh, you maybe don't want to use these annotations for the next map, but the uh, spatial information behind it could be useful. So we, we have an approach for digitizing this information and saving it in a um, uh, GIS data format. So then this is how you collect the uh, information from literature, like different uh, yeah, key facts. You can cite from a certain source. We do in a, save in a database a few, worms, uh, a few more words on this in, uh, on one of the next slides. These are the... Uh, GIS data sources, the most prominent ones uh, we use are the topography data, mostly just recent um, DMs, no really paleo DMs are available, at least to my knowledge, for large um, regions of the earth. Sometimes you find them for smaller catchments and smaller areas, but we are on certain uh, continent scale or at least multi country scale um, works. Uh, Last year I worked on paleoclimate simulations, uh, for example, that are available from um, uh, the IPCC modelings. Um, they develop very uh, complex climate models that are really, really great. And you can also run uh, these models with uh, paleo boundary conditions, like from uh, physics, like uh, parameters of insulation and exposure of the Earth. Uh, everything which is, has an impact on these models, then you get um, a gas concentration, like atmospheric uh, properties from the ice cores from Greenland back to several uh, thousand years, at least million years maybe, 100,000 years of course also. So um, from this there, there were some models about the LGM, for example, we could apply to uh, infer um, LGM, um, I, I did a Köppen Geiger classification, the geographers, and the geographers here might know that. You can infer like uh, uh, climate regimes um, like Mediterranean or temperate or arid, something like this, from just uh, climate data. And from this, you can draw nice nets, like show where it is colder, where it is warmer. So we can use that. Then you have uh, non-GIS data sources, because uh, it's mostly from the archaeology domain, like spreadsheets and tables in certain formats. But also yeah, there are from the geo um, name? from the um, uh, paleobotanist, for example, pollen databases, from which you could infer uh, like uh, also vegetational regimes and draw maps on it and stuff like this. Uh, um, yeah, this is uh, the database we collect all this information, this metadata information uh, of these data sources. It's based on a semantic media wiki. Uh, most of you would already have been in contact with media wiki. Media wiki is a software that is uh, the basis of Wikipedia, everybody knows. And semantic Wikipedia is uh, an extension to this media wiki which uh, allows to source structured data in the wiki. And, uh, edit it in a collaborative manner, like uh, the wiki, but structured, so you can query it and use it in a yeah, more sophisticated way, and also export data and 
all fancy stuff you normally would only get from a full-fledged database system, but with lower uh, technical hurdles, it's just normal, normal mm. geographers or archaeologists can enter data into it without having to know all the nitty-gritty stuff of a post-GIS database, for example. So this is uh, also a nice diagram I draw. So we have this database I showed you in the beginning. The metadata from there goes into here for data sets. Then we collect data and put it here. And then we have our database from which we can do a query, for example, show me all the data for oh no, first uh, for spatial data. This is also part of the uh, infrastructure. We have an SDI based on GeoNode and some further open source softwares for uh, publishing of the spatial data, but this is not so, so really important uh, for the point I made today. Uh, I'm wondering, I forgot the slide. I wanted to show you, but... Okay, first this. Um, we, we publish the data uh, in open science manner in this infrastructure, in this database I presented at the beginning um, with open licenses and open access and uh, we apply the DOIs for the data sets, so we hope you will cite it and we get impact in return. And uh, we apply standardized metadata, so, oh sorry, that should be a one, not a nine. And uh, yeah, to have it um, yeah, interchangeable, interoperable. I also, um, we, we also, can provide linked data to the CCAM. Uh, the uh, possibility of uh, mappings. You can directly export RDF. This is really ugly RDF. There's, there are no really fine definitions to my knowledge well, as I look at it. So I'm not a really expert into a semantic web, but I think it could be improved. And uh, this is a, uh, yeah, so. Such a map we can make from a query. So show me all the uh, AGM uh, data sets for the for for Europe, and we came up with this uh, maps. We have the AGM Caspian Sea. We have the AGM Ara Sea. We have the AGM um, Pontian Lake. We have uh, the coastlines uh, minus 120 meter from today. We have the Fennoscanian ice shield. We have uh, some inland waters sources, and uh, you can look it up in the database, cited with all the data sources in a specified metadata document, which I will just do. So we can. Oh, that's an Internet Explorer. I never looked at it in Internet Explorer, how it works. Yes. So this is uh, how it looks on the um, database. You have here a description metadata document with the sources. You have here links to the SDI, geospatial data sets, metadata, and links to related data sets in the database. And can look, for example, at the glaciation extents. Loads. But, um, so you have here the spatial data set, which you could directly download if you want. So this is the idea. We are just starting with some few data sets about this um, case study about LGM data. We started. It's not perfect yet. There could be much more data if uh, included, if available. So this will proceed with time then. So that's already the conclusions. Uh, yeah, we uh, apply an open science and open data approach to this uh, um, work to publish the data for the community. And, I thought about it as uh, like uh, gray data to uh, open data, something like this. It's not really theoretically worked out yet, but um, yeah, this uh, data from um, like papers or books 
into um, really usable usable GIS data sets, um, something related to Braille literature from self point of view. <coughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we would be happy to uh, get feedback on it and uh, if people uh, yeah contribute to it and use it. So that's it. Thank you.